La Mama Changona by Marcia Aguilar Calian. La Mama Chingona, written by Marcia Aguila Kalian. Setting, Tara, an apartment and college library in any town, California. Tara and Sam's apartment, doctor's office, hotel in Mexico, Malinche, land of Aztec empire, bedchambers of Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés. Time, Tara, year, 2005, to 2010, Malinche, year 1500. Precinct, <coughs> a thunderstorm, lightning cracks. Fool yawns as they enter, as if waking from a very long nap. They want to go back to sleep, but the yawn moves them closer downstage. They yawn a couple more times, scratching and getting into their body. A gust of wind blows by them. Their mouth becomes increasingly dry. A few small coughs. <coughs> Fool is wondering where the water is. They indicate that they are frustrated and thirsty. They begin to clap and use their arms as they try to do a rain dance. In a final moment of awareness, they look in their backs. With a smile, they pull out a water bottle. <laughs> Fool takes a drink and is satisfied. A little too satisfied. A little smug. They take another sip, and the water bottle is empty. They clap and a curtain waterfall appears upstage. Fool refills their bottle. There is so much inner life that they might just explode. They pull their full water bottle back in the bag. Fool pulls, Fool puts their hands on their stomach. It begins to rumble. They look in their bag, but it's empty. They gesture to ask the audience for a bite or a snack. From downstage, a single red pomegranate emerges. Fool considers the story of Adam and Eve. Fool enacts the snake that tricked Eve to eat the fruit, and that Adam ate the fruit, only to be banished by God. Fool's stomach growls. They gesture to convince the audience and themselves that it will probably be okay if they take a bite. <laughs> Fool opens the fruit, and a flame roars from the side of the stage. With shock and obedience, they return the fruit. Fool doesn't want to look at the flame. They hesitantly move closer to it. Fool exhales. They enjoy the warmth and express gratitude for the gifts that have been given to them. Act One, Scene One. Tara is a Chicana with dark hair and brown eyes. She has always worked hard for her family and to pursue her own dreams. As children, Tara and Fendi loved playing house and acting out scenes that usually ended in Tara dramatically dying. Tara didn't have a proclivity to death, just being dramatic. Tonight, Tara and Fendi are in Tara's college apartment. Fendi cuts limes while making a margarita, while Tara is reading one of the many books covering the sofa. Fendi approaches. Esta vez me matas con el cuchillo! Ay, Tara, tan dramático! <laughs> bueno, you can take the girl out of the telenovela, but you can't take the telenovela out of the girl. Or take the girl's nose out of the book. <sighs> I'm in college, Fendi. What, am, what do you expect? I expect to get drunk. And for you to take me to a real college party. <sighs> or I shall rip out your heart as you are ripping, ripping out mine. I'm already drunk. 
dying of regret by starting college late. I feel so behind in everything. How am I going to supposed to fit the, all of this information in my head? Oh, I will gladly chop off your head if it helps. It will be easier to get you into that little black dress. We're hot is ready for some shorties. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Déjame estudiar un poquito. Quiero ir a la biblioteca. A la biblioteca! You sound like a freshman Spanish student. I speak Spanish and I speak English. Chingate! And I am a freshman! <laughs> oh, I miss you, prima! <laughs> Fenty notices a small altar. ¿Qué es esto? ¿Brujería? You sound like our abuela. ¡Es el diablo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss her. Did Grandma know about this? Ooh, you're a chingona badass. It's my altar. It's my way to pray and connect to ancestors, including abuela. ¿Y? ¿Qué dicen? Some ancestor chisme? Sound of thunder. Did you hear that? Are they talking to you now? Maybe. I want them to. A veces no tengo ninguna idea que hacer. They help guide me. <coughs> que hacer en esta familia? Love, marriage, babies. Or just marriage and babies. Or just babies. <laughs> Let the ancestors guide you into hair, red lipstick, and a hot little dress. I'm gonna go walk around and see if I can find any cool parties. I'll be back to pick you up at 9 p.m. And you better look <coughs> sexy as fuck. Tara and Fendi fist bump each other. Fendi exits. <laughs> Blackout. Scene two. Tara enters the library. Tara has a list of books she needs to find. Sam's is seen walking through the aisles. They slightly miss each other until they are standing across from each other with their view blocked by a bookshelf. Tara scans to the bottom shelf. Sam's removes two books from the top shelf and returns one, causing a book to fall and hit Tara on the head. Chinga tu madre! Ouch! Oh my god, I am so sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I didn't see you. I was just putting the book bag and I must have pushed this book and totally hit you. This will be the last time I pick up Sexuality and the unnatural in colonial Latin America? ¿Qué dijiste? No, no entendí no, ninguna palabra. Oh, oh, sorry, I, I don't speak Spanish. Um, are you okay? I think so. Oh, you speak English. Um, can you stand up? Yes, I'm fine. It just took me by surprise. Uh, just some quick questions to rule out a concussion. Uh, where are you? Uh, at the library. Correct. What day is it? <laughs> Friday. Good, good. Uh, what's your name? Tara. Nice to meet you, Tara. Uh, can I get you some water, a chair, a restraining order? <laughs> it's okay, I'll live. Although, I do love really dramatic death scenes. Uh, I'm an actress. I, I, I was an actress. M. What? I used to be an actress, a B-list actress, another lifetime ago. <laughs> now I'm a student, obviously. I used to be a student here, uh, back for an alumni thing. So you're a student. What's your major? Mm, que uh, sorry? Um, history, English, literature, Chicano studies, <clears throat> undeclared mostly. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, it sounds like a lot of work. Well, I want to make sure I contribute something important. Maybe be a writer. <laughs> if I can figure out past and present tense. Uh, would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Uh, como te llamas? Uh, como te llamas? Me llamo Tara. Mayamo Sands, uh, Lieutenant Michael Sands. Blackout. Scene three. Six months later, Tara and Fendi sit in Tara's apartment. Tara is studying and Fendi is scrolling on her phone. 
The vibe is tense because last night Tara finally introduced Sam to her family. While Tara's dad had little to say about him except, ¿Tiene trabajo? And, ¿No habla español? Fendi and Tara nervously stare at Tara's phone simultaneously, catching each other periodically. Time. 1.43 p.m. Nothing really terrible happened, right? When boyfriends meet families, it's expected to go a little awry, a little awkward. Totally normal. A totally normal, absolute shit show. Who is bringing the drama? Mi papa dijo, ¿Cómo que no habla español? About a thousand times. My mom said about three words to Sam's. And your mom said she was going to call you, right? That's good, right? She doesn't call often. Exactamente. Dijo, te llamo. Te llamo mañana. Te llamo mañana. Te llamo mañana. With a tone. A tone. A tone. It, it's hard to explain, but it says a lot. Your sister like him, though, right? Phone rings. Tara and Fendi freeze. The phone rings again. Tara answers. Hola, mami. Saludos, tía! Fendi says hi. She says hi back. Bueno, ¿qué pensaste de Sam's? Sé que no habla español. I guess it does make it hard for you to communicate if he doesn't speak Spanish. He's definitely willing and wants to learn. I think you'll get to like him once you know him. How serious? Pretty serious. I know Alma's already married and with a baby on the way. <laughs> Tell me what? <laughs> She's naming the baby after you. Wow. No, no, well, it's tradition. Mm. The firstborn receives the matriarchal name. And I'm, I'm sure your friends will all be very jealous. Yeah, okay. Yes. That's wonderful. Okay, thank you for your prayers. Adios. She loves you, Tara. I know. But she loves my baby sister, and my baby, my baby sister's baby more. Don't be jealous. You got your man. You'll make all the babies. All will be well. Blackout. Scene four. Five years later, Tara and Sam's apartment. Tara enters her bedroom. Her altar is a little bigger, with a candle, sage, and small stones. Hey, Ma, it's Tara. Just wanted to check in. Did you get Sam's and my invite for our anniversary dinner? Can you believe it? Married five years. Give me a call back when you get this voicemail. Tara sits at the altar and lights a candle. She uses the sage smudge stick to clear the energy around her. I am here. I am present. I am now. I ask my clean and wise ancestors to support me and guide me on this day. I give gratitude to your blessings. To the North, Mother Earth, the root of who I am. To the West, water. I see my strength and wisdom from a place of love and not fear. To the South, Wind holds my boundaries with respect. East ignites my fire and my creativity. To the universe, I invite you to... Thunder sounds. Tara takes a moment. I invite you to guide me. I don't see a clear path. I am struggling at work with my family, with Sam's. 
I ask for thunderstorms. Fool enters with a flourish. Fool speaks in a gibberish, a made-up language that could sound like a real language. Tarot deciphers meaning through fool's emotions, verbal and physical expression. Ba king, ba jen, comment c'est? Ba jen, prancel. King de mou, bezou, ah la 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 la, boot, crab it, et the crag beep. Mmm. <laughs> Gele et au solar! Whoa! Who are you? Are you God? Are you the devil? Be, jen, poncel, et de cor. Le gravatis, et de culte maca ete. Vuce est de corsican. Librens Jesem Re, Gur Patra, Ite Teatro. Que? Well, I, I don't understand. No comprendo. Uh, Niet. Parlez vous français? Bajen français. Butrez luta ita butarsisco. Ah, la 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 ga! E te sabresca u turno cravata? Shagum! E te zambin? Lo ben mandet frate. I am fool. Representing a new beginning, having faith in the future. Embrace improvisation and believing in the universe. Improv, ill. Sam, <laughs> Tara freezes. Sorry to interrupt, I can't find my briefcase. A moment of silent tension as Sam's looks at Tara and Tara at Fool and Sam's. It is clear that Sam's does not hear Fool. Check behind the office door. Oh, yeah, thanks, babe. Also, coffee's ready. Uh, I'll be right down. Sam's is flexing in the mirror, psyching himself up for the day. <sighs> Fool follows Tara to the kitchen. Tara is hesitant, but Fool surprises her by being exceptionally helpful. Tara grabs a mug as Fool pours the coffee. Fool takes the bagels out of the toaster. They all make room for each other, like a synchronized dance. Fool zipping up Tara's dress. Fool fixes Sam's tie. Tara catches herself in a buoyant, happy attitude. Thanks, babe. Thanks, babe. She watches as Fool reflects this vibe, and Tara snaps. She's suddenly worried and heads to the bedroom. So, Sam's, help me change the sheets? Yeah, I'll be right there. I can't remember the last time we changed the sheets. I changed the sheets last week when you were at work after a little morning delight. Right. Uh, I'm up for a quickie. Have you noticed huh. anything strange <laughs> this morning? You noticed. I put cinnamon in the coffee. <laughs> yes, fue rico. Pero no, no. Like, like muy diferente. Like time has folded in onto itself to create a single timeline that has both has its own path and also subsequential parallel paths existing all at once. Hmm. Not that I've noticed. <laughs> I started my period. I was thinking I should go see a doctor. Get some tests done. I, I, I don't know what to do. It's gonna be okay. Um, but what if it's not okay? We'll figure it out. I'm getting you in that kitchen barefoot and pregnant if it's the last thing I do. Mm. Get my cheese more. Sam hugs Tara, but she is still worried. They return to the kitchen. Sam hands Tara a cup of coffee and full hands Sam his briefcase. Sam and Tara kiss. Sam exits. Tara has too many things in her hands and shoves a bagel in her mouth. As she exits, Tara drops the bagel and Fool, calling as a bird, using the tongs as talons, picks up the bagel and flies off.
Tara stands dumbfounded. Chinka! Blackout. Scene five. Tara arrives frazzled at the office and puts her briefcase and coffee on her desk. Bendy pops in with a bagel. How did you know? I know all. Oh, bless you, Fendi. Okay, today's schedule. 10 a.m. meeting with editor for Business Latinas magazine. It's an online interview, but cool attracts some. Mm, I need to write. Clear my day. Speaking of writing, Gloria called and won. It's not finished. A book. Deadlines don't seem to really land for you. What did she say exactly? Gloria, your brilliant and pestering agent states, and I quote, Tara has six weeks for her book to land on my desk or we will have to renegotiate our terms and cancel any further payments. Fuck! Pretty much, she like, sounded serious this time. Okay, I'll be in my office. Uh, come rescue me in a few hours for lunch. You got it. Did my mom call? Fendi exits. Tara sits at her desk. She holds her head in her hands, waiting for inspiration. Tara looks around and reads a quote from Gloria and Sandula. Fool enters and mouths the words. And I quote, Writing is dangerous because we are afraid of what the writing reveals. The fears, the angers, the strengths of a woman under a triple or quadruple oppression. Yet in that very act lies our survival, because a woman who writes has power, and a woman with power is feared. Tara begins typing. She stops. She starts again. She deletes what she has written. She notices Fool. Welcome, Fool. Please sit. Make yourself comfortable. Write my book? Help me conceive a baby? Lead me to adventures unknown? Oh, God. <laughs> I understood that! Yaterna galente de babruse. De scolta pu. De carre. De Calvin Reveal. Take your, take your head to the clouds? 
He goes to her and gives her a caress that she reluctantly accepts. The Spanish crown refuses to send more gold, and I am in need of more ships. I need more soldiers. Your need is... Will you ever conquer enough? Marina, my Malinche, have I conquered you enough? He removes his belt. Enough. Please. If you are not with me, you must be against me. I am always with you, Cortes. When the Spanish neglect you, I bring you tribes to fight for you. I negotiate with my people to trade with the Spanish and grow your army strong. You do as I say, Melinche. Of course. Cortes pulls her closer and caresses her face. He kisses her. Malinche goes to her altar and prays for guidance. Have you not been baptized in the name of God, your Savior? Why do you mess with that superstition? Malinche blows out the candle. She brings Cortes food, drink, and dotes on him. Soy conquistador. I am one of 20 slave girls gifted to the Spanish soldiers. And I serve as Cortes' translator. Trabajo y aprendo. I am praised and I am disciplined. The soldiers' words translate in my mind. Their insults transform in my imagination. They can't keep me caged when my mind is free. I find Cortes Intriguing. Él es diferente. Pale skin, blue eyes, light hair. The men here are childlike. They drink and swear and want to be adored. I mother them as they please. Malicha removes the necklace to become Tara. A translator, of course! The pages are all right here. I am writing Manicha's story. My mother told me that she was a, she is the, known as the mother of Mexico, an indigenous woman who used her intelligence and linguistic skills to, some say to save Mexico and others say to betray it. Why me? So best the babe is the boo can I get the power. <laughs> Who would believe me? Blackout. Act two, scene one. One week later, in the morning, Sam's and Tara are laying in bed. Me llamo Senor Sam's. Me llamo Senora Sam. Me gusta besar a mi esposa. Mmm, besame chingón. Claro que sí. No, claro que sí. <laughs> right, uh, I, I gotta get to the office. Lawsuits won't file themselves, and there are rumors going around. <gasps> Chisme! Dime. Well, someone very smart and handsome may be up for a partnership at the firm. Ooh, quién? Are they single? It's me. <laughs> we could afford to get a bigger place, really start the family we've been talking about, and your mom hints at every chance she gets. Uh, have you talked to her lately? No. That's amazing news for you. For us. I just need to not fuck up. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> well, if you need my help, I'm heading to the library. I have some more research to do on my book, but I can help. Uh, I've got paralegals for that. I am curious to know how the writing is going. Fine. Just fine? You haven't said much about it? I don't know. Uh, the writing feels a little unconventional. Leave it in. Will it be another till they kick me out of the library kind of night? I'll pick up dinner on the way home. Hey, Ma, um, I didn't want to leave this in a message, but 
I'm going to take some tests at the doctor's. Make sure everything down there is working. Call me back. Blackout. Scene 2. Later that day, Tara and Fendi are having lunch at a cafe. On oh, all that is holy! You're messing with me. No, nope. the book is almost finished. <laughs> That's amazing! Fendi, I lied to Sam's. Tell me everything. <coughs> I'm going to the doctor's this afternoon. And I didn't want to tell him. I didn't want him to worry. Worry about what? That my uterus, that where my uterus should be is a shriveled potato sack. <laughs> that I will be swallowed in my entirety by a soul-crushing monster. And that Sam's will leave me because I cannot bear him in air and therefore never earn my mother's approval. Damn, you are dramatic. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm taking the amazing assistant hat off and putting the amazing prima beret on. <laughs> Chinga tu madre! Andy, that's my mother! Fuck her! I'm your family. I'm gonna say how it is. What? She's not acting like an adult. Well, maybe if I had a kid, she'll finally... What? Turn into a kind and caring prized parent? We've all got issues. Girl, you're gonna be a baddest mother, you know that. You just need some help, you know? Mixing the sauce. If I ever get married and we decide not to have kids, if we decide to have kids, we'll need some help too. <laughs> Thank you, Fendi. And you're a wonderful tea already. I can't wait to spoil my little niece or leave you with everything, Fendi. Oh, God, help us. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> Blackout. Scene three. A doctor's office. Tara is sitting on a doctor's table. Full enters as Dr. Aitoro, wearing a jacket and stethoscope, holding Tara's file. Hi, Tierra! I'm Dr. Aitoro! How are you feeling today? Hello, Dr. Aitoro. Uh, um, I guess I'm a little nervous. Oh, don't be. <laughs> I'll be gentle, just like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, you had some tests done in regards to your fertility? Yes. My husband keeps saying it'll be okay, but I just wanted to make sure. Yes, well, I'm sorry to have to do a little bit of zoos, Tara, but we found a cyst in your uterus. What? Ah, we can remove the cyst. Ay, Dios. Ah, we'll also have to remove any scar tissue and possibly both fallopian tubes. My fallopian tubes? But when I'm trying to get pregnant. Well, there are still options for you. Options? Yes! This is the time to take the bull by the horns. Toro! Toro! There's IVF, IUUI, surrogacy. Right, yeah, that, 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 that's a lot, Doctor. I'm sure you could not conceive such a prognosis and you must be pregnant with questions. The fuck? Ah, uh, sorry, that didn't translate right. I'm supposed to be a mom. Oh, please don't cry and be a baby about this. There is no childless by choice documentary. Maybe I can get you a DVD. Uh, this is not my choice. Hey, fuck up, Tara. Infertility is a common problem with women of your age. Barren, childless, unfruitful, infertile, sterile. <laughs> Dr. Antonio's voice echoes into oblivion. Tara braids her hair as she becomes Marinche. I can relate. I have been shamed across multiple languages. And still my own name is the worst of all. Marinche means traitor. They call me La Chingada. Chingada means fucked. Light change. Scene 4. Outdoor marketplace. Nina holds a basket of fruit. Fool walks by and buys a pomegranate from Nina and exits. Malinche approaches Nina. Nilce. Nilce. I ate these as a little girl. My mother would scold me for turning the ground red and everything else I touched. I haven't seen one since I left Baisana. I was born in Baisana too. My family traveled here many years ago before my first daughter, daughter was born. I am a traveler too. What is your name? 
My name is Nina. You are Doña Mariche Marina? The one who walks with the pale faced man? Kerma. I have seen you talking with them. The same as you talk to the tribal men. Why? I must serve them and do as they wish. Yes, bring them food and water, but why translate their words? Why help them rise up against your own people? I am with my people. I am not one of them. In the marketplace, I sell to all tribes, even if we may have never communicated otherwise. I trade with the Spanish. They bring gold and weapons we've not seen before. Some villagers in fear have joined the Spanish, and some have joined ranks to fight against them. I understand. I serve the Spanish, but I am trying to save all of you from slaughter. Save us? Those Spanish have destroyed entire villages and tribes. I have prevented many massacres by negotiating for both sides. You're lucky I'm here to communicate with them. You're not here for us. Your head must be in the clouds. You walk like them, high and mighty. But you will be remembered as a traitor. You see the truth with your own two eyes, and yet you see nothing. You don't see me or my life. I have made choices from the choices I was given. I was not born a slave, but I live like one now. But that will change. Not you or them will lock me in any cage. Your words sting, but my truth is myself. Marina, I hear the Mexica whisper that Cortez is, is Quetzalcoatl the God sent to overthrow the Mexica. Perhaps you are the one to bring on their fate. Cortes is no God. If I dare dream that I hold anyone's fate in my hands, it is my son's. Is Cortes the father? Yes. My son is the first mestizo, born of Spanish and indigenous blood. He will have freedom and change the course of this land and its people. He will be seen as equal, and it will be good for all of us. Malinche, if you are not with us, you are against us. I am not one of them. Can't you see that? Do you have any information that could be of help to the tribes? If all people do is resist, they will die. If we do not resist, then we are already there. Nina, please understand. Do you really want to help? Come tomorrow. Bring your supplies for trade. I will tell you what I know. Light change. Hey, Mommy, it's me. Um, <clears throat> you're probably in church. I could use a little support right now. I, uh, I think maybe God is punishing me. I have some not good news if you want to know. Call me. Blackout. Scene 5. Tara is in her bedroom in a bleak state. Her phone rings. Hello. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, it's so nice to hear your voice. <laughs> I left you a few voicemails. Oh, you know I don't check those. How are you? Sad? Kind of confused? <gasps> oh, Tara! Are you leaving sounds? What? No, no, why would you say that? Well, why can't you see him as your son, my, my husband, my life partner? I just want you to have a family. A home filled with 
children and a beautiful life. Don't I get a say in my life? Don't I get to decide how it looks? Always put God first, honey. Abuela always said, ask and you shall receive. Can I ask you something? Of course. Well, whatever you need. <laughs> well, hey, I feel like I'm one of those TV interviews. Do you remember when you used to do those for the novela? Yeah, I would be so nervous talking in front of all those people. Oh, you were so good at that. I wish you would have kept acting. My character graduated, and the writers wrote me off. You know I tried to get another acting job. Well, I know you tried for a little while. Now, what's your question? I think I got my answer. I don't understand. It just seems like the way I live is not up to your standards. I have to make choices from the choices I have. Okay. My question is, where would I stand if I couldn't do what you wanted? Oh, damn. There is nothing you could do or not do that would make me love you any less. Thank you. Uh, I really needed to hear. Oh, oh, uh, uh, oh honey, uh, uh, Alma is on the other line. And she's going to bring the little one over for some playtime. We'll talk again soon, okay? Sure. Light change. Scene six. Tara is in her bedroom. Fool enters as uterus. Wearing a uterus mask. <laughs> Just between us, I'm a uterus creating all mankind. Just between us, I am ovulating. I need a little bump and grind. Got some sperm from them, and they right here. It's a meeting of the minds. Fertilization, you and us, uterus. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, Tara. You, you don't look right. Well, I, I had some work done. <laughs> it's sad. Oh, you're sad. Yeah, I don't want this. What's that? This! This life, this body. Oh, honey, what you gonna do? Write a new story, cast a thinner you, and make it happily ever after? Tara lights a candle, lights sage, preparing for her ritual to call ancestors. I am present. I am here. I am now. Grateful for your blessings. I ask the universe to support me and guide me on this day. Come on, universe! What else you got in that bag, fool? Mm. I'm improvising. Okay. I call on the woman who knew herself best. Frida Kahlo. <laughs> Frida, dime, what should I do? Ay, pocha, que hay que hacer? Paint yourself as a mother. Play it out. The story of birth. Plan a few birthday parties. Dance to the constant complaining of a teenager, and eventually your generation alpha will move you into a shady retirement home. Pero dale con ganas! Fool, help me! I know who would always make me feel better. I call upon la princesa of pop. Selena. <laughs> Como la flor con tanto amor, me diste tú, se marchito, me marchó.
says ito. Where's your Bible? The Bible is the path to salvation. Tara holds up the Bible and opens it up to reveal that it is hollowed out and filled with sage and rosemary. Ay! 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 Pastor! Esto es el diablo! El diablo, no? Are you from the devil? No! Que barbaridad! Soy tu abuela! Guadalupe! I want to know why you are calling on these childless women. Ay, mamá! Oh, one of the things I don't miss about being human. You're not mad about the summoning? Only God has the power. Power. <laughs> Everyone always wants power. Doctors think they're thinking they're God. And the rest of us just have to take it. Mija, to be brave, even when you feel you have no power, to believe in the path that God has set you, open your heart to the possibilities, and go to church and read your Bible. Remember how the church takes power. They use religion and colonization as a form of control and power. The Bible and the church is the foundation I don't want to fight you. Hey, what? I can take you. Exactamente. Uh -huh. Con gracia y poder. Mm. I wish I could go back to Mexico just one more time with you. I carried your mom in my belly when I crossed into the Estados Unidos. Like a fool, I believe the American streets were paved in gold. Pero it was lonely and difficult to adjust to a new language and a new way of life. You forged a new, a new path, like a real badass chingona. Hmm. You will create your own future. Maybe I should call upon La Llorona. <laughs> well, La Llorona, I, I mean, I, she's right here. Where? You! I! I. Oh. <laughs> wow, no. Act three, scene one. In Cortez's bedchamber, Cortez is speaking with a soldier. They are looking at a map. Malinche sits to the side eating a piece of fruit. Capitan, tomorrow morning we will march 300 men to the front line where we already have soldiers in place. How many Indios in the village? Close to a thousand, Capitan. Do we have enough horses? Yes, Capitan. The natives will not stand a chance. My lord, may I help to negotiate with the tribe? Doña, these are stupid savages. They offer themselves to the Aztecs for human sacrifice. They are obviously weak. Necesito una pieza de indias for the soldiers. Go and see that it's done. Soldier exits. Nina enters with fruit. Cortez takes a pomegranate and breaks it open and squeezes the juice like blood is spilling everywhere. He eyes Nina with confident intimidation and exits. Nina, they are planning an attack. I need you to go warn the villagers and hide the women and children. Will you do this? Emma. Thank you. Nina exits. Malinche goes to her altar and prays. Lights out. Scene two. The next day in Tara and Sam's bedroom. I would have wanted to be there with you. I'm sorry. I thought it would be easier on you. She would have flipped out if you met that doctor. I would have flipped his lid. Then could I talk to the doctor? Not that doctor. Definitely. A little one of us would have been really cool, though. Of course. That's what I always dreamed of. But I can't give it to you. If I could get pregnant, just me and you, just us, it would be no question. But it's more than that. And, and even after getting help, Mixing the sauce like Fendi said. I still might not get pregnant. I always wanted kids. Me too. 
concrete get to see, get to experience seeing the world through their eyes. When I was little, I had this toy chest filled with Barbies. Fendi and I would play for hours. Imagine all the things we do when we were adults. She'd always make the Barbies kiss. <laughs> We'd be teachers and flight attendants and star in big Hollywood blockbusters. What about you? I always like reading those choose your own adventure books. Uh, I'd read them over and over again, and uh, sometimes I even wrote my own. You were a writer? Yeah. You never told me. What did you write about? Maybe saving the planet from space invaders or traveling to far off places. It seemed like a weird way to tell a story. I have heard crazier things happening. What about adoption? Uh, turn to page 39. We could wait for years for a baby. Uh, we could open it up and ask for an older kid. Uh, turn to page 81. No dirty diapers or late night feedings. Is adoption something you really want? What about your mom and your family? Uh, it felt like a destined obligation for you. Exactly. It's felt like this personal responsibility ingrained in me since I was a little girl. I'm wondering if that's what I wanted. Go to page 99. Or it's just a box I was supposed to check. Go to page 66. We could take a vacation. Uh, maybe Fiji, page 72. Or Cabo, uh, turn to page 91. Or I can fly you to the moon. Uh, turn to page 169. Oh, que grosero! <laughs> Let's make a plan. Maybe Mexico? Go out, Casino. Laco, <clears throat> scene three. Cortez's bedchamber. Enter Malinche crying, Cortez follows angry. You slaughtered all of them! And who do you listen to? They would have fought for you! They were Topil, low-level Indian soldiers. The negotiations were a distraction as we invaded from the north. When the Council of Indies hears what was done, I will finally be taken seriously. This is why women do not belong on the battleground. Forgive me, Malinche, but you are my most important weapon. I won't kill for you. Yes, exactly. I need you to help save lives. We will meet with the chief of the Aztecs, Montezuma. You will convince him to surrender to me. The Mexica are the most powerful Indios in all of the land. They will not just surrender. Are you so afraid to be with the most powerful man in the world? You dare defy me again? No, my lord. Forgive me. You will do as I say, and you will speak as I say. You are my mujer. Yes, my lord. You have gained so much by being by my side. They call you Doña. Our son is mestizo with status. We are a family. Don't disappoint me by destroying all of that. Cortez exits. Malinche is shaken. She begins to pray. I have spent much of my life translating for others. I may have lost a part of myself. Cortes defeated Montezuma and we watched the Aztec civilization fall. The Spanish would alter life in what they would come to call Mexico City, making indigenous language almost extinct. I hope listen to the words of my story. Under oppression, our survival is resistance. Blackout. Scene 4. A month later in Sam's and Tara's apartment. Sam's is drinking a cup of tea. Fendi enters from the bedroom. She's medicated and down for the couch. I could do with a little medication myself. Tequila? Sam gets a bottle of tequila and two glasses. He pours them both a drink. Let's go, primo! Uh -huh. Oh, yeah! Uh -huh. All right, Sam. 
The end, you too? <sighs> In between ladies, playing the single game. Uh, I don't get it, Philip. <laughs> How's the law? Ah, oh, getting booed up with my law firm. Just made partner last week. Ah, attack and conquer. Right. How's Tara's, uh, Tara's book coming along? She hasn't talked to me much about it. I hope her recovery time doesn't put her behind schedule. Um, she sent in the first draft to Gloria before she went in for the surgery. And I think Gloria loves it. I knew it would be great. Should I be worried? Oh, I will never recommend anyone to worry, especially about Tara. She's going to be okay. Thank you. Not just for coming to take care of her, but no, actually for always taking care of her. I'm sorry, I can't do more. You guys are my family. I I feel a bit help, helpless. I, I can't imagine how you are feeling. Sandy. It's fucking unfair, if you ask me. Yeah, it is. Uh, but, like you said, you are our familia. Orale. <laughs> I got your back. And I got your back, prima. Lackham, scene five, in Tara's bedroom, she is at her altar. To my wise ancestors, I pray. I pray for my unknown child that I will never know. Fool! Show me my baby! Is there absence that haunts me? It's hidden from me. But if I can catch a glimpse, that would be enough. One year for Christmas, I really wanted a cabbage patch doll. <laughs> the one with the flexible hair. To style and twist it, and it would stay that way. Fendi told me she knew where my mom had hidden my present. So when we were at Abuelas, we went to Abuelas closet. There was my cabbage patch doll. And he climbed to the top shelf and got it for me. I remember holding it and feeling I didn't want it anymore. So I was thinking, you can show me the spirit of who my baby could be. I believe they exist on a spiritual, energetic, cosmic vortex, and my baby is waiting. If I can tell them that I love them, and if they would just forgive me in my body for making them wait to be born, <laughs> maybe in another life, I'll be their mother. I just want them to know how much I wanted to be their mama. <laughs> They're not even born yet. And already I'm putting my needs on them. I don't want to put any demands on them. I don't want them to feel like they're filling a void in me. Full answers. No, I can't be her. No, you're always there. Somos iguales. No, como será tú? Eres la madre de México. La mamá chingona. Y tú? La mamá chingada. Eres mi mamá. Me has dado mi voz. 
May I stay out? I'm here to tell you, to let you in on a secret. You are powerful when you love. You are powerful when you love yourself. So my advice to you is love like a motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know if I can. No puedo. Mira, look at me. Si puedes con todo tu corazón. Dime. I can. I can love with all my heart. Lock on. Scene six. In Mexico. Four months later, a modern replica bedchamber of the 15th century. Fool leaves suitcases by the door and waits for a tip. Sam's tips Fool and Fool reacts with extreme joy. Nah, 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 nah. I think I overtipped. <gasps> this is supposed to be the replica of Cortez's bed chamber. How cool is that? Aha. I'll be Cortez and you can be Malinche. I know. Mm. I'll be Cortez and you be Malinche. Season four. <laughs> Ooh, oh, let, let, let me shower first. We've been traveling all day and I need to wipe off these layers of Sweat and dirt. Yeah, okay. Uh, voy a dar la vuelta a ver qué hay que ver. Mi mm. español es muy bueno. Qué mm. <laughs> <Get> sexy. <laughs> Tara removes a pink stone from her purse and begins to pray. Full enters. I love being back on this land. I feel connected again. Matea, ella ve. The book is done. Malinche, la mamá chingona. It's out running around the world. Volve gravates, puna danse, et punchante. Yes. Quita pinacuite. Yes, like like me and Sam's. Fendi is scheduled 12 countries on my book tour, and Oaxaca is our last stop. Mm -hmm. Zuma ite ar arte. It feels like home here. I guess some things must come to an end so things can start anew. Thank you, fool. I have faith in the future. Unknown, but with healing and understanding. Be la cosa y el rey gravates. I pray that the universe brings us together again. Tara gives Fool the stone. They hug. Fool puts the stone in the bag and takes out G Spirit's shawl to become G Spirit. Mija, Mexico is to a word. See, Mexico is calling. So I answer. You are a fighter. Chingona, like me. <laughs> Fool gives Tara a beaded necklace. Fool exits. Tara puts on the necklace to become Malinche. I am traveling east with the wind. They say each journey is a struggle for life. I'm traveling on a ship to España. Married to one of Cortez's generals. Cortez has stayed, and his Spanish wife travels with him. Two women crossing lives on ships in the night. I will be welcomed in Spain. Revered as a delegate in the Congregate of the Mexica. And I hope my people will remember me as the mother of a new beginning. I am grateful for each sunrise and sunset. And somewhere in between all that, I have lived a new dream. It may have not been the story I would have written for myself, but I will live it to the fullest all the same. Blackout. End of play. <laughs>